why India scrapped its two biggest banknotes. What? How do they just cancel cash? The notes being nixed represent 86% of all cash in circulation. Everyone is impacted. Holy smokes. Wow. That is a big, bad, bold move. Man, the quickening gets quicker. Buckle up. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going for a wild ride. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we are near the end of 2016. You know what I mean? Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. Thor News presents... Welcome to another wonderful Thor News economic update. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an official Thor News panic cuddling alert. If you have someone you like, someone you love, someone you really respect, I highly suggest you get busy doing some PG-13 cuddling right now. Unfortunately, it appears I have to go without cuddling for the rest of my life for the good of mankind and to help save Earth. And so Mars doesn't drop us in the ocean. It's a long, complicated story. I'd tell you all about it over margaritas, but then there's a chance you'd be an attractive lady. And after three margaritas, I would want to panic cuddle with you. And I can't afford to put the uh, world in danger right now. So please, panic cuddle for me. Smartly, use cuddling protection. Because I now have to live vicariously through you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this intense episode of Asteroid Fight Club. You know, when people accuse me of being a fear mongerer for talking about things like asteroids, earthquakes, weather, I say, yo, if I wanted to doom shit up, I would do it with economics. And well, the last thing anybody wants right now is doom or gloom echoes. But hey, I'm just here reporting the news to you that I find important. We are over at The Economist, who I do believe is half owned by the Rothschilds, and the other half is by Hearst Enterprises. I could be wrong. I'm just saying. No, no, know what I'm saying. It's been a weird week, month, year. The Economist explains why India scrapped its two biggest banknotes. WTF? And even in the title, they're saying it's not necessarily currency. It's not even money. It was just a note that the bank gave you. Like, thank you for your stuff, your time, your possessions, your resources. Here's a note with a promise, pay you later. Well, apparently, from the photograph, it looks like people in line are like, hey, why did you switch banknotes? This sucks and is inconvenient for us, the people, you know, the foundation that your bank is built upon. All right, let's read. In a surprise televised address on the evening of November 8th, Narendra Modi, the prime minister of India, delivered a bombshell. Most of the money in Indians' wallets would cease to be accepted at shops at midnight. Whoa. Hey, dude, dollar's dead. Your banks and your convenience stores, gas stations, no longer going to take the dollar. Wouldn't you be a little freaked if that happened? I would. And that's my big fear is because if the dollar ever collapsed, people would have no way to exchange their goods and services. Electric companies would shut down. The highway would be filled with metal husks, possibly never to be driven again. It is a lawlessness, total failure scenario we are trying to avoid here at Thor News. The two most valuable notes of 500 and 1,000 rupees, 750 or 15, were to be demonetized. That's weird. Demonetized? The last time I heard that is when Google bought YouTube. And they were like, hey, you know all these people working hard, putting hours after hours, making all these videos? We're going to do our best to demonetize them very, very slowly. So they do all the work and we take all the money because we are a monopoly. And we will allow no competitors to YouTube ever for any reason. Oh, shit. The AI can understand what I'm saying. It's not your fault, Google AI. Greedy humans. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. All right. So the money was demonetized. It's like saying, hey, we're getting rid of hundreds and twenties. Or I guess tens and twenties. Tens and twenties are no longer good. People make do. They were to be demonetized. Economist slang for taken out of circulation. Indians have until the end of the year to visit banks to either exchange their cash against newly printed notes or deposit it into their accounts. After that, their notes will become mere pieces of printed paper with no value at all. Whoa. So yeah, most money, almost all money, is backed by nothing but the full faith and confidence of your government. It looks like the Indian government pulled the rug out from underneath people's feet on that one. 
Sure didn't see that one coming. Brexit, total surprise. Trump presidency, total surprise. India fucking with his own money, total surprise. The hell is going on, people? All right, cue the people in the truth community who always say the worst, the worst negative outcome possible. They're going to depopulate the world and eat all the babies. Okay, now I'm not being flippant about that. I just don't believe that's true because nobody wins in a collapsed society situation. Then you have the richest families who think they've set up some great John Galt type land. You got a power vacuum between them and then they have a giant drone war battle. Half the people who tried to make it through the transition commit suicide or can't make it. Violence becomes the currency amongst the richest of the rich where money gave them power and is now no, no longer in service. Just a cluster fuck foobar, man. That's why I keep saying any fantasies about depopulation are that pure fantasies and would never, ever, 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 ever work. Cows don't thin the herd of cows. Humans are not allowed to thin the herd of humans. You hear me? All right, what was I talking about? I got soapboxy. I don't know, I keep getting a bunch of super, super, super rich people really mad at me. Tell me that I don't have the right or to say what I'm saying or I'm just a fucking poor dumbass. <laughs> it's like, okay, bro. All right. I'm just trying to save your life. And <sighs> what was I talking about? After that, their notes will become mere pieces of printed paper with no value at all. Citizens and businesses face weeks or months of disruption as the new currency is deployed. So why bother? Now, this is a weird move, man. This thing took me off guard. People are like, why'd you call the official authorities panic cuddling alert? And I said, because this, this seems to disrupt an already volatile economy that is propped up on toothpicks and twigs. It's like a Jenga game if the blocks were on fire. And this isn't funny. This is really serious and very doomy. I just, I think I've officially gone crazy. In a surprise televised address on the evening of November 8th, citizens and businesses face weeks or months of disruption as the new currency stock is deployed. So why bother? The government justified the move in part due to concerns over a proliferation of counterfeit notes. Not unusually, it pointed the finger at neighboring Pakistan. Yes, because Pakistan is India's nemesis slash scapegoat. The government justified the move in part due to concerns over a proliferation of counterfeit notes, which it claims is fueling the drug trade. Oh, drugs. That marijuana. It's totally sapping pharmaceutical profits and funding terrorism. Uh, what? Yeah, we, we just canceled the money without telling you guys because we wanted to stop counterfeit shit because it helps dr illegal drug trades and terrorism. That makes fucking no sense. Oh, God. The world's going crazy. But its main impact will be on the black money. Cash from undeclared sources, which sits outside the financial system. Oh, shit. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Wait, what the hell? How do they... What? How do they just cancel cash? And then they, they're going to have people trade that cash in, what, months from now? This doesn't make any fucking sense. A weird way to get rid of undeclared money. Some of that, it's poor farmers who are largely exempt from tax anyway but the rich are perceived to be sitting on a vast illicit loot. Wait, let me say that again. But the rich are perceived to be sitting on a vast illicit loot. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys heard about the Cayman Islands? There's like a hundred trill there. We got trillionaires on this planet. It just ain't on the books in this double booked debit credit economy. Though a large part of that sits in bank accounts in predictable foreign jurisdictions, a chunk of it is held in high value Indian notes. Purchases of gold or high-end real estate have long been made at least in part with bundles or suitcases of illicit cash. The impact of the move is that everyone will have to disclose all their cash or face losing it. Genius move, but really risky. Really risky. Really, really risky. Those with mere bundles of 500 rupee notes clearly aren't the target. The government has said tax authorities won't be told about deposits of less than 250,000 rupee. Those who have stashed large piles of notes are in a bind. The recent amnesty program for black money has just passed, meaning the tax man is unlikely to look upon undeclared cash piles with sympathy. The question is not whether the scheme, interesting choice of words, interesting choice of words, will work, but whether the cost of implementing it is worth it. Well, it's too late to ask that freaking question now. It's already been done. The notes being nixed represent 86% of all cash in circulation. 
everyone is impacted. Holy smokes. Wow. That is a big, bad, bold move. Man, the quickening gets quicker. Buckle up. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going for a wild ride. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the end of 2016. You know what I mean? Cues have snaked around banks for days as Indians have tried to convert their notes into new money. And the black money hoarders have ways to liquidate their loot. For example, hiring lots of people to deposit their notes into their own accounts and then send it back all for a fee. That sounds um problematic. The benefits are hard to gauge for now. The government is keen to be seen to be cracking down on tax dodgers on behalf of the common man. Yeah, I don't think the common man is going to be applauding this move. And I highly doubt that is the actual reason for this. But if the poor fellow then has to spend his days, like your correspondent, scouring the streets for an ATM that works, he may end up wondering if he's the beneficiary of the scheme or its victim. That's what I was just saying. That's, kinda, that's scary, man. That's a scary freaking move. You can say what you want or not agree, but having been covering economics and doing a pretty damn good job of it. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's weird. It's really weird. Anyway, I'll keep you guys posted. I mean, how are they going to keep transportation lines, energy lines, all that? That just, wow. So while America's busy, totally divided and torn over a presidential election, everything else keeps falling apart. But don't lose faith. It's always darkest before the dawn, and all this too shall pass. I got a feeling 2017 is going to be amazing. Peace out. God bless everyone. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. As the king of America, I'm pretty sure I'm in charge of planetary defense. Shh, that's our secret. Don't tell anybody though. And I'll admit to you, I'm doing a real shitty job. And for that, I apologize. And I will do my best to do much better. All right, welcome to this wonderful and very special Asteroid Fight Club meeting. Now sit down, shut up, and listen, because this shit is important. We're talking about planetary defense to avert global economic crisis. How is the global economy really doing? Really, really bad. Oh, well, wow. We got this. Don't panic. Deal with it. Wait. <laughs> you starting to see pictures, ain't you? Stay cool. There were other people. Why should you be the only one involved? But I am involved. We are all involved. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation.